In terms of projects that, are, that we have under construction or in advanced development, uh, the site of our first pilot plant way back uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s is Herton, Germany. And uh, we had a project that was partially constructed, but our partner had financial difficulties in that, and so the whole thing came to a standstill. We've since picked that project back up, and we're now reconfiguring it to be a five megawatt electric project uh, using the green waste uh, from the local community as well as uh, biomass wood chips. That's our generation four design. Uh, that we developed at Puna, and we're uh, making some changes to it in the drying technology and a few other little minor tweaks, uh, but that one will be probably in full-fledged uh, construction in uh, the end of this year, beginning of 2014. We have a partnership with a, a firm called Good Earth Power, which is an infrastructure development company. Uh, it's a really a, a fascinating company. And we have a, a partnership with them, and we're working with them on a project down in Nigeria. And this is, uh, th there's an effort down there by the president to sponsor the construction of a bunch of housing. And the ultimate goal is ultimately, uh, you know, a million homes, but we're starting off with a very early phase here of some community development. And this includes not only construction of homes, but also hospitals and the supporting police and fire facilities and so on and so forth. We're putting in our Conquer Blue Reformer to process the waste that will be generated by these commercial establishments and by the homes. And the first phase going in is right now under construction, and it's a 2.8 megawatt electric system, again with MRF separated reformables that came from the MSW generated by commercial and residential uh, uh, community. Um, in Chennai, India, that's an, again a generation four project. That was again one on a competitive tender in India. And again, this is like the Pune project. We have a MRF separated uh, system where we're uh, taking out the reformables and they'll go in and that's gonna be a three megawatt electric system. And then finally, uh, we just recently completed the signature of a power purchase agreement uh, with a local utility in Arizona. And this is a small little project that Conquer Blue will own. Um, what's interesting about this one is that we're oversizing the reformer to not only produce one megawatt of electrical power, which I know is small, uh, but it's a real meaningful project for us, but we're also going to be uh, producing biochar. And our company's done quite a bit of work in the biochar area, and so we're real anxious and, and hopeful that that product will come out as a co-product along with electricity and uh, create some favorable economics to us, even for a project this small. In, some of you may be aware that uh, Lockheed Martin recently announced uh, their agreement with Conquer Blue USA. Uh, they did a, a detailed uh, international review of different technologies, and luckily for us, they ended up choosing Conquer Blue as their solid waste conversion technology of choice. Um, Lockheed Martin will provide the manufacturing and system integration of our systems. Um, they'll warrant delivery schedule and the acceptance test parameters that you would normally want to see from a vendor. Um, we're using Lockheed as our preferred EPC contractor and they'll provide a full completion wrap for all the deliverables that are uh, set up in terms of the acceptance and the schedule um, on the system. And then also, as you know, of course, Lockheed has a lot of customers, both private sector and governmental around the world, and they can bring our solution where it's appropriate to their customer base to help them solve their waste problems. So we're very excited about this development that we have in Lockheed Martin. In terms of our market approach, uh, we work with local partners, uh, but we're pretty selective about who we work with. We do have uh, a couple negotiated master license agreements that give the partner the right to undertake a series of projects in a defined geographic area, and then for each project, they're still required to get a specific site license. Uh, we do make system sales uh, to interested and qualified customers, um, and we will offer out a single site license, kind of one at a time, uh, to these customers. And we have a, a, a set of procedures we go through to try and collect the information to make sure that we can do the best job possible in answering their questions as they're going through the development process on their project. Sometimes, I mentioned, we will participate as a project owner. Uh, that's been as a public-private partnership, like we have with uh, the Pune and Chennai tenders over in India. Um, we're doing equity investment uh, to a small extent in uh, self-developed projects. As you know, if you do a lot of projects, it requires a lot of equity capital. We're just simply not that big to be able to fund all of our own deals. So 
by no means are we exclusively developing projects for our own account. And then finally, there are developers who will come to us uh, with an idea for a project and they may ask that we participate as an equity player. In general, that will be a small interest, not a very large one, but we are considering um, uh, participation in that way. So in conclusion, uh, Conquer Blue is a privately held energy technology firm. Uh, we offer our environmentally flexible Conquer Blue reformer. It can handle a huge variety of wastes. Uh, we've tested on just an enormous variety of wastes, uh, both in the pilot units and what we're actually treating in these commercial units around the world. Uh, that ranges from municipal solid waste that's obviously been sorted to take out the reformables. Uh, we've treated industrial toxic waste, sewage sludge, conventional woody biomass, and, and many others. Um, we can alter the syngas characteristics by how we actually operate the system and it will be impacted to a certain extent by the fuel input that we're working with. And the end products that we're focusing on right now are electricity production, in some cases hydrogen, purified hydrogen production, and more recently we've been working with uh, several, not our technology, but several uh, uh, companies we're working with on conversion to liquid fuels and chemicals. Um, we've got projects in Europe, Asia, Africa, North America, and we're trying to leverage these productive uh, partnerships. So we have a Lockheed and our individual development partners, and uh, we think we have a very exciting future ahead of us, and I'm honored to be part of this company. Thank you very much. Thanks, Don. Any questions? Yes, Dave? A number of years ago, I had some involvement with a company called Blue Tower and a partial pilot plant in Hareton and so forth. This all looks very familiar. I assume that you have taken that over in some sense. Yeah, that was a partnership with a company called Solar Millennium, and Solar Millennium went bankrupt. They were our partner on that project. They put in actually a significant amount of money into the project, and when they went bankrupt, it left us kind of hanging high and dry as a technology provider. So things have evolved uh, since that happened, and we picked up the pieces and are now moving forward uh, with a, a, uh, a finance project, and we've upscaled it to five megawatts. So you are correct, it was known as uh, Blue Tower. Thank you. You're welcome. Could you tell us something very general about how you deal with uh, the air pollutants? Uh, in terms of the um, air pollution, the sources of air emissions depend upon the particular setup. But in general, uh, the emissions will come from the flue gases that are generated by the char burner. And those will have the, the typical uh, you know, direct combustion uh, 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 emission factors in there, which would be nitrous oxides, carbon monoxide, uh, particulate matter. And so depending upon the local regulations, uh, that would dictate what type of treatment we put in uh, for the air emission. But certainly it's an end of stack, so to speak, emissions control. When we have reciprocating engines where we're taking the syngas, that'll be another source of emissions. And there again, it depends upon what the local regulations are that might dictate whether or not you need to put in uh, selective catalytic reduction for NOx control and also CADEX for uh, CO and VOCs. So in many jurisdictions that will not be required. Uh, but in others, like if you were to do this in uh, the South Coast Air Basin in California, you'd certainly have to put in those types of uh, post-emission controls or post-exhaust controls. Thank you. 